Hey, it's Brooks with Character Design Forge. Time is so limited, especially because of the other things that are happening in our lives, and it makes it so difficult sometimes to get meaningful time or progress on your creative work. Now, I know for me, especially this past year, it's been a real challenge, and I'm sure that that surprises some people because you might say, well, don't you draw for a living? And yeah, that's true. I'm probably drawing more than if it wasn't my job, but it's still a struggle to make time even to get your just your typical commitments out and especially to work on personal work that you want to. So just to kind of put things in perspective as a freelance artist, in a given week I've got companies, studios, and clients. Right now it's around like one or two of each. Their needs are all different and so are their timetables. So I'll have smaller projects from folks to get to as well and then there's any of my work that you guys see. Usually these videos take an average of a day or so to put together, depending on the complexity, sometimes longer. And then any of the normal things in life or obligations or errands that anyone has. And so it's important to me as much as possible to strike a balance uh, enough where my wife remembers what I look like, uh, I take time to exercise, and I spend time with friends and family, because if you're only just working, that's a recipe for pretty quick burnout. And so each of those work things all need a lot of thought and consideration put into them. Uh, they have mental work and emotional work, as any longtime artist can attest to. And you can see uh, it's a little bit of a juggling act. Uh, it might be different from a nine to five job where you can kind of clock in and out, even though there can be plenty of juggling there. And so there's great things and some difficulties that come with that. So part of the point of all this is at no point did I mention any personal work or projects. Really, it's all things that are for clients or other people. And as much as I've been trying to bridge the video making gap with personal projects sometimes, with like the Forge of Character videos, no one really seems interested in those compared to the typical ones. So if I'm not careful or intentional, I can very easily start to fill my week up with any of those work projects, catching up on one, uh, thinking about the next, and unless I really make the time, I can't really slot in those personal project things. So I thought I'd show you what's been really successful for me recently and help you if you feel like no matter your circumstances, if you feel like you don't have enough uh, time for your art or you feel daunted by how much you want to get done or the scope of something. So everyone's circumstances, again, are going to be different, but there's a few things that are definitely constants. Uh, getting interrupted has been proven to really take a toll on productivity. Um, it can take several minutes to kind of come back from an interruption mentally. And if you're just constantly pivoting, then the depth of the work that you can do is pretty significantly diminished. Uh, so this includes things like notifications or messages or browsing around online or having split attention, uh, trying to multitask. And I don't have any exact math on this, but say you were trying to watch a 45 minute TV show in the background or the equivalent amount of YouTube and also try and finish some kind of focused work that would also take about 45 minutes if you were undistracted. Well, I think it's gonna take you longer than the sum of those times to actually finish it. Like you're gonna spend three or four episodes worth working instead. And so sometimes that work is kind of a low mental processing, but there's other times when you're really undercutting the quality of what you can make because you aren't focused. Now the other thing about focus, lots of people say that they can't focus for long periods of time. And even though, yeah, not being neurotypical uh, and things like that can affect it, but it's actually kind of like a muscle you have to develop. So it's a little bit like saying, well, I can't lift 200 pounds. Maybe not right now, but it's a very good possibility you could train toward that, that point. Um, I think if you tried to sit down for 45 minutes undistracted right now, and you're used to having other people or your phone or something going on uh, alongside of that, you might have uh, even some like anxiety of what am I missing out on, uh, or you'll just hit a wall mentally where you can't really do it anymore. Um, but like with any muscle, you can build it up if you're trying, and you can slowly break out of that need for constant connection. Now, there are like human limits to the amount of time that we can focus, uh, so don't expect to ever sit down for eight hours uh, and with no input or outside anything, just hyper-focused through eight hours of quality work. It's not really going to happen. We do have to split it up. Um, so for me recently, I've been able to handle two hour periods of focused work. And then you take a little break, but even a half hour break after working two hours is better than spending six hours working, but you check every email that comes in every 10 minutes. Something else I'm doing, which I have done in the past, is starting these focused periods first thing in the morning, getting up early. Everyone's circumstance is different. That's like the fifth time I've said that. But this serves a, a couple of purposes for me. For one, I'm up before everyone else. No one is expecting me somewhere. You shouldn't have too many clients reaching out to you at 5.30 in the morning. 
Uh, but also you can really start accomplishing a lot more by starting the day with the hardest thing you have to do or the most uh, mentally intensive or focus required work that you have to do and then rolling down from there. Uh, if you're spending all day dreading that tough thing that you have to do, you'll do everything you can to push it off or prioritize something else. Uh, and that makes the whole day filled with dread. Uh, so now contrast that with a day where you start with the tough stuff or intensive stuff and it's all downhill from there. Uh, it's just a much healthier outlook I've had since doing this. Plus you're using your best foot forward on the stuff that matters. So focus time early in the morning. Uh, and personally, I've been doing these every morning, even on the weekends, you may choose to put in some rest days or something. The next thing that I've done is looked at what it is I want to accomplish, what I need to accomplish, and split that into these two hour or so chunks, uh, or estimating you know, how long each chunk or uh, task is going to take. And I've found that uh, as far as splitting these things up go, everything has to be down to like its lowest molecular structure, right? So if I, for example, said uh, come up with ideas for videos or like write three videos right in one chunk or something not only is that probably not enough time but it also makes me go like oh I can't really check it off because I only did one video and stuff like that and so you start to fall out of the chunk so the the more manageable and uh, trackable the chunk is the better um, so then I try to only assign myself one or two of those chunks a day uh, which really like four hours of this hyper focused work is going to be a lot more than eight hours of distracted work and then I can take some of those other hours in the day and reply to emails, do errands, uh, some sort of low intensity work. So I'm still accomplishing something but I'm not pushing something more important out of the way for it. So right now I'm working on some really exciting things because I want the Patreon to have a tier where you get something new physically from me every month and so there's a lot of prep work that goes into that but right now that's my primary personal project. Um, by the way, there's something new on Patreon already starting this past week, uh, which is patron exclusive videos, and I'll tell you more about that at the end. Um, but just looking at the scope of what this big project is at face value, it could be too daunting to even start because of how much there is to do, and so you just shut down and put it off. So by doing what I was talking about, taking each thing and splitting it up into what it would take to do, uh, and then I assign it to myself on a calendar that's over here, I'll show you. Uh, again, these aren't booked eight hour days of things. It's usually 5.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Uh, and then sometimes a second one from eight to 10. So there's still plenty of time left in the day for client work or video work or even nothing at all. And now I know how long it's going to take roughly for me to finish the work. And I don't have this looming sense of when will I ever get done? Uh, can I ever get it done? Can you take that guesswork out of it? So I know everyone's life and schedule is different sixth time saying it, one of the biggest things I see people say is that they can't do the early morning thing. And all I can say is if your only experience with getting up early is doing so for school or for work, uh, in other words, so that the first thing you do in the morning is something you have to do for someone else and it involves waking up earlier than you'd like to, that's kind of miserable enough that you'd never want to get up if you didn't have to. But doing so for yourself is a whole different story. Uh, otherwise, if you can't do that, if you're already getting up early for school, uh, try and still find some point in the day that, and use it to work on that big thing you'd like to be getting done, whether that's art practice or studies or your big story, and get some music that you're already familiar with uh, playing. Get everything on Do Not Disturb and out of the way. Make it clear to everyone else that just for this amount of time, even if it's just 45 minutes or so, I'm not available. And ease yourself into it. Uh, even if the first few times you get nothing done and all you did was stay disconnected for 30 minutes, keep it up because you can get some really good results. So I've got to thank all of you sincerely since we recently hit 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube, which is crazy, but we also met the goal on Patreon for making an exclusive video every month, which is really exciting. And I'm really appreciative that you've kept the forge burning for me to do that. Uh, it really makes it possible for me to focus on this aspect of the work more and if you just watch this whole video, you can see how big of a deal that is. So this first month's video is about rendering, both like the technique and methods of rendering. And I'm also showing there uh, first a rendering style that I've been using recently that I'm super happy with. So if you've been following for a while, you know how big of a struggle that the rendering stuff has been for me in the past. So hopefully some of it is helpful for you too. That's available for all patrons there if you're interested. Otherwise, I hope this video helped. Share it if you can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Have fun creating.